are really two clocks going. One is counting the minutes toward midnight. The other ticked off the time on the field. Time has almost run out on the New Orleans Saints. Late in the fourth quarter, it is the Rams 17, Saints 14. And Mike Longman is standing by now in Metairie with reaction from the fans. Mike? And John, uh, 40 seconds left in the game. A lot of fans here in Metairie are hoping that uh, the Saints can put it in Morton Anderson field goal range. And it looks like they may have just done that, as a matter of fact. Morton Anderson, of course, one of the uh, co-owners here of Champion Sports Bar in Metairie. And if the Saints do not make it tonight, it will certainly need be not be for a shortage of crowd noise. Fanatical Saints fans dressed out in every kind of get-up imaginable are ringing in the new year by sounding an uproar, cheering their team they believe all the way to the playoffs. They're going to win. I know they are. That's right. Tell them, Dana. Saints going to win. That's right. Yeah, look. I get up like a Christmas tree. Yeah, go Saints, go. This is going to be a great game, too. We're going to have fun all night. It's going to party from here on the Bourbon Street. We'll keep going all night. In the Dome, by halftime, most fans were predicting the Saints would not only win, but win big. They're looking good tonight, too, to me. Yeah? Yeah, I think we're going to win by at least by seven. Is this a good way to spend New Year's Eve? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, to bring the New Year's in right. Yeah. We're going all the way. All the way. Big win. Big win. Going on to Chicago. At Champion Sports Bar in Metairie, you could experience the roar of the crowd even if you didn't have tickets to the big game. Go you guys are confident. Yeah. confident. Yeah. Hey, the Rams won't score again. Yeah. Two and two. Some, in fact, prefer to enjoy the game via TV with a few friends. Here we at least get our drinks served to us. At the game, we have to go get them. So there are some advantages to being Oh, yeah. I mean, look, we got great company, lots of crowds. And even uh, here in Metairie tonight, I don't think you could get a drink right now. All eyes are on the screen. It looks like it will be up to one of the owners of this bar, Morton Anderson, to decide this game. And the fans here are glued to the set. Back to you, John. All right, thanks, Mike Longman. To clarify, of course, it is 17 to 17 late in the fourth quarter. 1991 will bring new hopes and fresh aspirations and higher taxes, among them a sizable liquor tax. Tracy Robinson tells us shoppers and retailers were stocking up today. The booze rush was on today. Consumers were buying booze by the bottles and cases trying to beat tomorrow's federal tax increase on liquor. With the increase in prices, I have a party tonight, of course, down in the quarter, so I'm getting the stock for that. But I'm also starting to stock up, have a party beginning of January. So mm -hmm. since I'm here now, I just as soon go ahead and get it all now and save some money. The price in beer will probably jump from 25 cents to 60 cents a can, depending on the brand. But expect a price shock on more expensive liquor. A bottle of Johnny Walker, you know, for $10.99, you'd probably find that next day for $12.99. People were out in droves today stockpiling beer and spirits because after tomorrow, this bottle will actually cost you $2 more. At Dordnex Food Market, shoppers were cleaning off the shelves. And distributors like New Orleans Beverage Company couldn't fill orders fast enough. In December is a record month for us. We've done well over 100,000 cases, which is over 17% higher than any other month in the corporation's history. Besides the federal tax increase, restaurants and bars will be tacking on price increases too. The drinks could go as high as five dollars. Some some people already get that price, but we're in a different range than they are. But five bucks for a drink? Sure. Big restaurants might go to seven dollars. But paying more for booze didn't seem to bother these drinkers in this town. Pay a little more. Tracy Robinson, Eyewitness News, Night Watch. White supremacist Byron De La Beckwith was officially arrested today for the 1963 murder of civil rights leader Medgar Evers. De La Beckwith was already in custody in Tennessee on a fugitive warrant. Authorities say the arrest will speed his extradition to Mississippi. Two fires in South Louisiana killed three people today. South of Crowley, a two-month-old baby, along with his 18-year-old mother, were killed when a blaze swept through their two-story home. Acadia fire officials say the fire may have been ignited by Christmas tree lights. In Hammond, fire officials found the body of an elderly man on the floor of his gutted kitchen. Officials say Frederick Hagaines died from apparent smoke inhalation. The cause of that blaze is under investigation. 
Vice President Dan Quayle told American soldiers in the Middle East today that any potential military action against Iraq would be decisive and quick. Quayle told the servicemen and women they can do their jobs and go home. He promised that the Mideast would not be another Vietnam. America's newly freed ambassador to Kuwait will celebrate the new year in New Orleans. Nathaniel Howell was trapped in the U.S. Embassy after the Iraqi invasion. He was set free only two weeks ago. We got a number of calls from Kuwaitis saying thank you for staying with us and uh, I wish I could have stayed until until this was resolved because it's not over. There's still a very small peaceful state with a lot of ties to this country living under a brutal occupation and that has to end before I'll be totally satisfied. Howell, a Virginia alum, is in town for the Sugar Bowl. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. It's hard to imagine what it's like not being able to breathe. Hopefully through the efforts of the American Lung Association, you'll never have to. Support the American Lung Association. Use Christmas seals. Your child. Your whole child. Heart, mind, and soul. These are the daily concerns of teachers in Catholic schools. Entrust your child to Catholic educators. They care. Little Fry! Don't let your advertising budget end up in the gutter. Be thrown to the dogs or wash up before it's time. Television advertising is today's best medium to reach and capture your customers. In the New Orleans area, newspaper only reaches 41% of the market. Television reaches 99%, giving you the opportunity to tap into over $11 billion in retail sales. Call the WWL Television Sales Department and let us explain how television can work for you. Look out! It's a celebration of saving at Macy's New Year's Sale. Savings of 20 to 50% throughout the store. And it's going on now. Don't let your search for a skilled employee become a blind game of chance. Contact Job Service today. Saints fever grips New Orleans tonight for only the second time in franchise history. The Saints are in the NFL playoffs. The Saints locked up a wild card berth with a 20 to 17 victory tonight over the Los Angeles Rams in the Superdome. Jim is here with more on what seemed an impossibility a couple of weeks ago. And just moments ago, just seconds ago, they did it. Let's go right to the Superdome and view the scene. What you're listening to is pandemonium. 8-8 eight eight was good enough in 91 because the Saints are going to the playoffs and two of the men responsible are right here. They win it 20-17. First, Toy Cook, a fabulous win for the team. Yeah, it was incredible. You know, last year we lost the same sort of scenario and we found a way to win this time. And, hey, all we want to do was get a chance to get in the playoff and now we got one. Vince, amazing first year. But it's, it feels good, man, to be, you know, be, be a rookie and get into the playoffs. It just it's outstanding. I don't know what to say. All right, Mike Lansford got his due tonight. Morton Anderson paid him back. And finally, it happened to him in 86 or whenever. Hey, we got the chance. We came through. That's all we wanted. All right, go celebrate, man. 20 to 17. They had to get to the locker room, and it was well worth the wait. The Saints at 8-8 eight and eight will now make the playoffs. Morton Anderson, with two seconds to play on the clock, kicked a 24-yard field goal. That would end it. The Saints, 20 to 17. They're on to Chicago. We're going to have more live post game coming up in sports. But for now, Mike Austin from the Superdome. Back to you. Mike, before we come back to you, let's show everybody how they did it tonight in the Superdome. John, the Saints are in the playoffs for the second time in their history, as you heard. Saints played an efficient first half, build up a 14-3 lead on the Rams. You're taking a look at the way it got started. You got the feeling it might be the Saints' night because Mike Lansford, who's killed the Saints in the past, missed an easy field goal. The Saints' special teams were exemplary by way of contrast. This guy had a huge night, Vince Buck, the cornerback, returning the punt here. 
34 yards down to the Ram 39-yard line. That will produce the Saints' first touchdown. Steve Walsh hits a wide open. Floyd Turner, a diving reception, a 28-yard touchdown, 7-0 Saints. John Robinson had to engineer a comeback, and he and his offense would. In the second quarter, though, it was a sparkling return by Gene Atkins. He breaks it after a Ram field goal for 50 yards to the Ram 47-yard line. Then the Saints went on a time-consuming drive that resulted in a touchdown with Ironhead Hayward plowing over 14-3 Saints. Morton Anderson missed a pair of first-half field goals. This one came from 48 yards out. The Rams would threaten later on. Henry Ellard, who had a big night, makes a costly mistake here. A nice catch, but he's stripped of the football on a hard hit by Gene Atkins. The ball rolls free. Look at Sam Mills come flying in, and he covers it. Saints get the football. Then it's Everett, though, hitting Flipper Anderson, and he takes it in. It's 14 to 10. Saints at that time, it would be 17-17. You see right here a touchdown pass to Robert Del Pino. This would knot it up at 17 all. But then the hero, Morton Anderson, with just two seconds left, he would connect on the field goal. It would come from 34 yards away, and the Saints would win it tonight by a score of 20 to 17. They are the third. NFC wild card. Jim Moore doesn't have a black hair left on his head, <laughs> and all the drinks are on Morton Anderson at Champions. It's tonight. amazing. You could argue, I guess, that the Saints were the best team not to make the playoffs the last couple of years. Uh, this year, they kind of walk in the back door, but what a bizarre season. They might just be the worst team in the playoffs, but I'll tell you what, there's nobody in the playoffs right now, I think, that scares anyone the way everybody's playing and the way that quarterbacks are hobbled. The Bears looked awful over the weekend against the Chiefs. I don't think they'll be overconfident taking on the Saints in Soldier yeah, Field yeah, this you, coming your Sunday. Your feeling is that the the Saints do have a shot at the Bears. With well, their defense, they can stay in the game with anybody. But boy, I'll tell you what, the offense, especially in the second half tonight, looked like the offense of the last half of the season, and that's mm. scary. Somehow they got to generate more points than this. All right, Jim, Mike Longman has spent the night in Metairie with some fans, and let's go to him live and find out what their reaction is. Mike? As you might imagine, uh, John, uh, when it went down to uh, the foot of Morton Anderson, people in this bar were uh, quite, quite enthusiastic, to say the least. As you know by now, the Saints kept it exciting right up to the last moment, and uh, that kept all eyes in here glued to the television set. Lots of screaming and yelling, and uh, I think everybody really just quite relieved that uh, Morton got to kick it twice, got it through, and they are headed to Chicago in the playoffs. So again, great excitement here. I think people uh, very much enjoying the New Year's. They're enjoying it early, and they'll probably enjoy it from now right on until midnight. Back to you, John. <laughs> all right, thanks, Mike. We'll be back with more in just a moment. In about an hour, you can get a desirable new look. A glowing look. An approachable look. In about an hour, get the one look that's right for you at iMasters Optical Superstore with eyewear specialists to help and in-store labs so even no-line bifocals and trifocals are ready in about an hour. For the look you've been looking for, in about an hour, get a better look at iMasters. Buy one, get one free, or we'll pay up to $40 for your eye exam. In this room is a remarkable entertainment. It can make you laugh. <laughs> or change moods. It'll take you around the world. It comes with 50,000 people to help. It does more, faster. Yet for all you get, it costs amazingly little. It's AT&T Long Distance. New Year's Day, Maison Blanche. A day of beauty, a fashion clearance. Save an extra 30%. The New Year's Day Beauty Bash starts 10 a.m. at Maison Blanche. Climb aboard the St. Charles Line as we travel through the heart of the Central Business District. Today, skyscrapers soar above what used to be part of a sugarcane plantation owned by Bienville, the founder of New Orleans. In the late 1700s, the land was sold off to develop the Crescent City's first suburb, Faubourg St. Mary. Now, local third and fourth graders will learn about our unique neighborhoods and a historic streetcar that connects them through a new program called Life Along the Line. They'll explore the CBD's Gallier Hall, a famous example of Greek Revival architecture. Join the St. Charles Revitalization Project as we celebrate 155 years of life along the line.
Co-sponsored by Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up and WWL-TV Channel 4. It is cold, it is wet, it is dreary, and no one in New Orleans cares right and now. And nobody even knows it, and neither do I, John. I'd rather talk Other about the game. Awfully fun. <laughs> well, it is cool outside, John. It's in the 40s outside with uh, cloudy skies in the area. 47 at the airport in Auburn, 45 in Slidell. The humidity is 83% uh, now, and the winds from the northeast at 6 miles per hour. The pressure 30, 36, and rising. Almost all the area temperatures in the 40s tonight. There's one exception all the way up at Macomb, 36 degrees there. Everybody else in the 40s under cloudy skies. And there is some spotty light rain still around the area. You can see it here right over parts of the city and parts of the lake onto the northeast and east out in the Mississippi Sound, a few to the southwest. And there's another batch of showers after a break in them to the west-southwest, right off the Texas and the western Louisiana coastline. So I think for the next uh, 24, possibly 36 hours, it'll be cloudy. And there'll be some areas that'll get some spotty light rain, but not a great deal. I still think that's the situation for tomorrow. We have more southerly and southwesterly flow in the middle part of the atmosphere up over this cold air giving us an overrunning condition with the moist almost tropical air mass above this uh, cold air and that's all you need in, in the recipe to keep the clouds in and the chance for at least some spotty light rain and providing we stay cloudy and don't get too much rain we should have a high tomorrow in the low to mid 50s if it stays rainy the temperature will stay in the 40s if we get a break in the sun, we'll get up into the upper 50s. But other parts of the country will certainly be a lot colder than we will. Single digits in parts of the northern plains. And here's the overnight forecast. A chance for some spotty light rain north of the lake. Look for lows to be between 36 and 42. So no freeze is expected. South of the lake, 40 to 45 degrees. Winds blowing from the north at about 8 to 15 miles per hour at the most. Tomorrow, still a chance for some spotty light rain, although much of the area may get away with just some heavy cloudiness. And the highs tomorrow, 50 to 55 degrees. Winds northeast at 8 to 15 miles per hour. The extended forecast, still a little chance for rain on Wednesday. And after a chilly morning Thursday in the 30s, slow warming through Saturday then with a decrease in the cloudiness. Small craft advisory continues in effect for north to northeast winds, that's offshore. 15 to 25 knots, no small craft advisory for the lakes, and the winds over the lakes will be perhaps 10 to 15 or 20 knots at most. The range on the tides, 2.2 feet, the river stands at 11.4 and rising, and the lake temperature is 64. All right, thanks Dave. We'll be back in just a moment with more on the Saints in the playoffs. Almost over. There are still great deals on every Toyota. But they're going fast. Joe Garagiola. Joe. Well, the Orangos here saved the fast 2000, eh? More than 2000. With financing, made it easy. These guys are really dealing. Toyota Fun is the time to deal with Camry option savings and special factory to dealer incentives. Trucks, too. But not for long. Don't <laughs> miss it. See your Toyota Fun dealer today. <laughs> Tomorrow, everything at Campo will be moving fast. It's the Campo New Year's sale, and everything in the store has to go. To catch the good deals, you have to hurry to Campo tomorrow. For one day only, catch a big Zenith 27-inch TV with remote and save $102 at just $398, or an RCA 13-inch TV with quartz tuning at just $168. To catch the good deals, you have to come to Campo tomorrow. It's the Campo one-day New Year's sale tomorrow only at every Campo store. I'm on Alicia. Because of the human-animal bond I've always felt, I can't stand the thought of animals being hurt needlessly. That's why I won't wear cosmetics and personal care products that are animal tested. I can look beautiful without hurting animals. The next time you shop, make the beautiful choice. Buy cosmetics and personal care products that aren't tested on animals. For more information, contact the Humane Society of the United States in Washington, D.C. 
New Orleans is a city of fine dining, and one of the truly great meals of the year will be served on January 7th and 8th at the Fairmont. It's the 14th annual Chef's Charity for Children, and 10 of New Orleans' finest chefs will show off their best recipes and then serve all these fabulous dishes as lunch for the audience. Crawfish with lobster sauce, shrimp with roasted peppers, fish with tomato and dill are just a few of the gourmet treats to be tasted, along with complimentary wine. That's January 7th and 8th to benefit St. Michael's School. Y'all come. I don't know if you caught the news at 6 o'clock tonight. We did our top 10 for the year. We may have to revise that list now. I think this is definitely in the mm. top 10, and uh, with a bullet climbing toward number <laughs> one, perhaps, as we speak. It was Archie Manning's pleasure, along with John Ferguson, tonight to call this game from the Superdome on the WWL Saints radio network. He's with Mike Haas back in the Superdome. Let's join those two gentlemen. Mike, Archie? Well, we can uh, add another name to that list. You can add Eric Martin to that list, and Archie Manning joining us. Eric, compare this to 87. Is it more sweet? It really is, uh, Mike. We've been struggling throughout the whole year. Our uh, offense has been struggling. You know, we brought in a new quarterback and Steve Walsh, and we've been struggling throughout the year offensively. But tonight we came came through, and, uh, you know, we're excited about it. Sweet revenge for Morton Anderson against Mike Lansford. Mike Lansford had done some dirty deeds here in the Superdome. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm sure Martin was excited about having the opportunity to, to kick the winning field goal, and he came through for us. What went through your mind when the initial kick was blocked? Did you tell right away that someone was offside? No, I really didn't. I really didn't know the play. I was in the back, you know, back over there sitting down, and they told me it was a flag. So, you know, Martin got another chance to kick it, and, you know, it was great. Big plays tonight. A lot from the special teams. Gene Atkins, Vince Buck, great field position on several occasions. Exactly. You know, our special team played very good today. Uh, Unfortunately, our offense didn't execute well, and you know we had the ball on our on on our side of the 50, on their side of the 50, and we didn't we didn't get any points in the second half, and it was really frustrating. But uh, we came through in the clutch. Came through when you had to come through. Looking forward to Chicago. Didn't take you long to get that Bears hat on. Oh yeah, definitely. You know I'm looking forward to go down, and you know it's going to be a very physical game. But uh, you know I'm also looking forward to seeing Mike and Jordan. What was it like in the locker room afterwards? Oh, it was exciting. You know, it's, you know, it's still exciting, and I can't wait to get back in. You know, we're just excited to make the playoff. Everybody counting us out, and we're back in there. And, you know, everybody starts 0-0 zero and zero now. Anything can happen. That's right. 8-8. Eight and eight. Everybody forget it now. Now you go to Chicago and play the Bears on Sunday. Definitely. We feel good about our chances against the Bears, so we're just going to go out this week and prepare, and hopefully we can do well. Eric, get back in there with your teammates. Thanks a lot, pal. Appreciate it. As we said, Archie Manning, who was uh, also here in 87, compare it to 87. 87 with the great record, but at 8-8 eight and eight to get in the way they did, uh, very exciting. Yeah, I'm not sure. Overall, we probably, you know, at this point, probably had a better football team in 87. I don't think you can say enough, though, about the character of this team, how everyone pretty much thought we were out of it uh, late in the season. Uh, the team hung in there. Credit really should go to Jim Moore and the coaching staff because they didn't let the, the team believe that. The players believe that it was over. They hung in there and persevered, and that's been a strong point of this team. This team has great character. Tonight, we kept the thrill in it. I mean, I thought we were going to put them away. The Ra you got to give the Rams some credit. They had nothing to gain. They hung in there. They made some big plays late. Uh, that's a money receiver right there. And they came back. He made a big play early. We came back to him. I, th I thought a great break was us was when the Rams scored so quickly down there when they got in position. We had plenty of time to, with our time out to get back and let the best kicker in football try one. Now, I got to admit, my heart went to my toes when they blocked the kick. I did not see Alvin Wright jump off sides. He, he did anticipate the kick, probably a good move on his part to try to. You know Morton's going to make a short kick like that. He drove Dombrowski back, blocked the kick. Fortunately, the official was head up, heads up, called it, and we got another try. Um, it's just, uh, you know, the exciting thing about it, I think, too, Mike, and not only making the, the playoffs and joining some great teams as the NFC playoff team this year, we're going to Chicago to play a team that's lost three out of its last four games and a team that we should match up with very well. Uh, they're similar in that they play outstanding defense, and they've had some trouble m moving the football. They've had some trouble with their passing game. I got to believe our uh, special teams, who play, as you mentioned and Eric mentioned, played outstanding football tonight, as they have throughout the year, played a great game tonight. I think our special teams probably better than theirs. I, I, I'm looking forward to going to Chicago. Now, as I told John Ferguson during the game tonight, I'm looking forward to being in the press box. I wouldn't want to be on the field. I used to have some horrible <laughs> days in Chicago. Tell me, on the final drive, obviously started great. The Rams kicked off the high kickoff and short, then Gene Atkins, and, and then suddenly the crossing patterns worked, the crossing pattern to Eric Martin. Yeah, you know, they, 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 we came out of four receivers, and they played some man, and Eric beat his man on a crossing pattern just as he is in the first quarter, and they had no one to make the tackle. I was surprised they tried the short kickoff. Uh, Benny Thompson here wants on the air. I'm afraid he's going to forearm me. I think I'm going to get out. All right, Archie. Thanks a lot for stopping by. 
We've got uh, Benny Thompson here. Benny, what a win, a huge win. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we knew what we had to do to uh, uh, move uh, one step farther, and we went out and did it today. And the special teams, as it has been late in the season, was very crucial tonight. Well, we knew if we was, uh, was going to win the ball game that the uh, special team was going to have to play a big part on it, and uh, we did it tonight, and, hey, we're in the playoffs, and, and that's, what, that's all that's count. Tell me what it was like in there when you first got in after the game. Well, I was cramped up, and the doctor had to take me in, so uh, I really don't know how, how it was when they first went in, but uh, I know it's pretty rowdy right now. T takes a lot to get a smile out of Jim Moore. He must be ear to ear right now. Well, I haven't seen him yet. I, I don't know what's the uh, look on his face right now, but uh, he should be pretty happy. All right, Benny, thanks a lot. Get back in there. All right, thank thanks, you. Thanks, Tom. So the Saints will now head to Chicago. As we have not mentioned, it is a Sunday game at 3 o'clock from Soldier Field. And as Archie said, these two teams do match up very well. The Bears with Mike Tomczak at quarterback. They do not have starter Jim Harbaugh. It will be an interesting game from the Superdome as the Saints go to the playoffs, bringing in 1991 Mike Hoss. Back to you, Jim. Happy New Year, Mike. Happy New Year, Archie. Happy New Year, John. Happy New Year, New Orleans, I'd say. We're not too point. far away from it at this point. And uh, we should mention as well, as Mike was talking about the playoff game on Sunday, that it will be right here on Channel 4 at 3 o'clock on Sunday, the Saints at Soldier Field. All right. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. It's a celebration of savings at Macy's New Year's Sale. Savings for her, for him, and Macy Kids. Plus, great values for your home. Start your new year off right with 20 to 50% savings throughout the store. Remember, use your Macy's card or American Express when shopping Macy's New Year's sale. That's going on now. Macy's, we're a part of your life. On January 19th, the Superdome will explode! On Wheels presents the U.S. Hot Rod Grand Slam of Motorsports and Camel Mud and Monster Truck Racing Championships. Get ready for a mega motor meltdown. Slide by slide, nitro burning mud racing. Hot Rod 4x4 Boeing, death defying sky jump. Plus, for the first time in New Orleans, Grave Digger versus Bigfoot, Excalibur, and more. It's Monster Truck Racing. 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 Tickets now. The box office and all ticket master locations. One night only. January 19th. The Superdome. 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 Baltimore, Maryland. Site of the National Aquarium. Inside, a crowd witnesses the joint issue of Soviet Union and United States commemorative postage stamps featuring the killer whale, sea lion, sea otter, and dolphin, all common to U.S. and Soviet territorial waters. Postmaster General Anthony M. Frank sums up the ceremony's theme. But perhaps most importantly, they will carry to every corner of the globe the important message that these beautiful, magnificent animals inhabiting our Earth's oceans are a cherished treasure to be respected and protected. Here in this film from Alaska, we see the killer whale in its natural habitat, an intelligent and fierce hunter. And here we see the whale depicted on a poster, the owner having affixed U.S. and Soviet stamps to be hand canceled. And here at SeaWorld, now a playful and talented performer. All four creatures of the sea are now at your local post office. If you are just joining us for only the second time in the franchise's history, the New Orleans Saints are playoff bound, in this case, Chicago bound, where they will play the Bears next weekend in Soldier Field after a 20 to 17 victory in the final moments of the game tonight in the Superdome. Mike uh, Longman watched that tonight uh, from the sports bar partially owned by Morton Anderson, the man who won the game for the Saints, and let's go to Mike now. All right, and uh, typical of the New Orleans Saints, they kept it... Uh, Kept it exciting right down to the very last uh, second. And uh, people here were glued to the sense. In fact, uh, every time Jim ran a replay on sports, uh, the crowd was cheering the game once again. Uh, we don't have the Benson boogie here, but we have a good number of fans who are boogieing it. As you know, it's New Year's Eve, John, and we may not get this place back in control, but it, it probably doesn't really matter, to tell you the truth. Obviously, these people are excited. Their team is going to the playoffs in Chicago. And uh, this is New Year's Eve in New Orleans for Metairie. Back to you, John. Mike is in that. Uh, Mike is in that crowd somewhere. I think. beats the heck out of covering school board meetings, doesn't it? <laughs> That's why it's so much fun to do sports. We were uh, speculating a few moments ago about whether or not Jim Mora had a smile on his face. I understand that we have some tape in from moments ago, and, and let's find out if Jim Mora has a smile on his face. 
it took us 16 games to get to 500, but uh, we finally made it, and we did it at the right time. Uh, this game was kind of, of a reflection of our football team, I thought, uh, all year. We just, uh, you know, we, we hung in there and hung in there and hung in there and fought through some adversity, and good things happened to us at the end. And that's, that's kind of what's happened to our, our team this year, all season. We've just hung in there tough and fought through some adversity, and some good things have happened to us at the end because we're eight and eight going to the playoffs. It's, uh, it's a little ironic that we're... Two year, the last two years we've been 10 and 10 and 6 and 9 and 7 and haven't gone to the play playoffs and this year we finally make 500 on the last last day of the year or the, or the day of the uh, of the season and, and 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 we're 8 and 8 and we're going to the playoffs but uh, we'll take it and we're going to do our best uh, I'm real happy and real proud of our of our of our team our players our coaches uh, and the entire organization it's uh, they've hung in there tough all year and uh, I believe we deserve to go, and I'm, I'm happy, I'm, I'm thrilled, and, and our players are too. They, they fought their guts out tonight, uh, hung in there, and, and we got it done. I want to say this, <clears throat> our kicking game tonight was the difference. Our kicking game was the difference in this ball game tonight, and I don't want to take anything away from offense or defense, because they did what they had to do too. But our return game set up all our points, uh, our coverage was excellent, the field goal by Morton to win the game, uh, it was outstanding, and when you get into a game like this, it's a tight game, a, a game that uh, might, you know, go either way, uh, perhaps uh, a pivotal game in your season, which obviously this was, uh, very often the kicking game is the difference. We spent a lot of time on it, and tonight it paid off. And that's a tribute to all of our people that are involved in the kicking game and our coach, Joe Marciano. I'm not sure if that was a smile or not, but it was it was close. There was a little smile in there. He, he still has some business to do, very businesslike. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing that's put the Saints where they are. I mean, people panic a little bit. Everybody does. We do in the media when they lose a big game. We all tend to think week to week. You know, they're heroes one week and they're goats the next. These guys have the long-range plan. Finks and Moore have never lost sight of the eventual goal, and the eventual goal after 16 games is to be in the playoffs, and that's what they got. They didn't get sidetracked during all the things that went wrong this season, and now they're where they want to be. And now they've got a chance to do something because nobody in the playoffs, probably outside the 49ers, is a team that anybody thinks is overwhelming this year because of all the injuries and all the problems that quarterbacks so many teams have. The Bears are one of them. All right, Bears first. How do we match up against the Chicago Bears? Bears are strong defensively, don't have much of an offense, probably have a better uh, running game than we do, but their passing game isn't any better than ours is, and right now ours is pretty bad. Well, you know, Steve Walsh takes a lot of, of abuse mm -hmm. from fans, and, and I'm sure that the probably is, is uh, down on himself occasionally. Um, I, I've heard it said that when you have a quarterback who's new, that you ask him not to make mistakes, and it almost right. seems like the team, I guess, that would prevail next week would be the one whose quarterback doesn't make mistakes. That's often the case. Uh, you know, the, the Bears have a bit of a quarterback uh, controversy going on right now. In the NFL today, yesterday on CBS, they were talking about Mike Ditka after the game would not endorse Mike Tomzak as his starter next week in the playoffs. All they've got behind him is the rookie, uh, Peter Tom Willis, out mm -hmm. of FSU. And that's how down he is on his quarterback. So uh, they've got their problems. I don't expect to see the Bears blow out the Saints. I would be vastly surprised if that happened. I'm not saying the Bears can't win the game, but I would say this. I would say that the Bears will not blow the Saints off the field as the Vikings did when the Saints were in the playoffs in 87. Steve Walsh, how would you assess his performance tonight? Uh, spotty. I thought he, early in the game, uh, the Saints came out and he looked like he was pretty much in command, but even the throw on the touchdown to Turner, Turner was far more open than that, and he had to make a great catch for the touchdown. So I think uh, Steve has played very spotty football, and they're going to have to rely on their ground game and their special teams. But as, uh, as you heard Jim Morris say, Special teams are a third of the game, along with offense and defense, and down through the years, nobody's done a better job with that than Joe Marciano. And Morton Anderson, who was the hero tonight, could very well be put in the same role next week to win the game against the Bears. The Saints are going to play primarily conservative, tight football, rely on their defense, and hope that their special teams and their defense can win the game for them. Okay, we'll be back with more in just a moment. 
New Orleans is a city of fine dining, and one of the truly great meals of the year will be served on January 7th and 8th at the Fairmont. It's the 14th annual Chef's Charity for Children, and 10 of New Orleans' finest chefs will show off their best recipes and then serve all these fabulous dishes as lunch for the audience. Crawfish with lobster sauce, shrimp with roasted peppers, fish with tomato and dill are just a few of the gourmet treats to be tasted, along with complimentary wine. That's January 7th and 8th to benefit St. Michael's School. Y'all come. All right, some final thoughts now from Jim on how the Saints stack up. Uh, this is a game that is, is very winnable, in other words, oh, in yes, Chicago. Oh, yes, very much so. For a second, though, I'd like to look back on this game. You know, last night on fourth down and four, they had Mike Lansford on, and he was very cocky. He's not had a very good year. He's not had a very good year, but uh, he last night was pretty cocky saying how uh, he's made his career kicking <laughs> against the Saints and kicking big field goals. Well, if Mike Lansford doesn't miss that pretty short field goal at the beginning of the game, the Rams win that game tonight. So uh, Mike Lansford, uh, who has hurt the Saints so often this year, tonight is at least partially responsible for the Rams' defeat by the Saints. And mm. it's nice to have Morton Anderson, who'd missed a couple of field goals too, although they were long, have a chance to win it, which he did. The special teams the coach talked about, and really he meant, as he, as he mentioned, both sides of the ball. The return game was incredible. I think the first two Saints scorers we had. Vince Buck and Gene Atkins line. both did great jobs. And this is a, a team right now that doesn't have a great special teamer like Amel Gray. He's in Detroit now and doing the job for the Lions a week in and week out. So they do it with execution, not tremendous personnel. Gene Atkins doesn't have all the speed in the world, and neither does Vince Buck. But Joe Marciano coaches the heck out of these guys, and he does year after year after year, and that's why they play like they did tonight. I believe that Mike Haas has Craig Ironhead Hayward uh, standing by in the Superdome now and let's go there Mike thank you very much John Craig another phenomenal performance and what everybody has been talking about Jim Moore Benny Thompson the special teams tonight was the difference oh yeah definitely that uh, we knew we had a good special team especially our kickoff we try to get them um, in good position so our defense can just go down there and just kind of like pound them and then when they punt we get it at the 50 uh, which they showed a couple times today and uh Special teams have been the main factor. Uh, they had very, very few uh, returns on a punt team and uh, field goals. And Morty, you know, uh, once we get inside the 30, that's like definite. And uh, they unfortunately missed a couple earlier, but, uh, you know, in clutch time, he came through. The second touchdown for the Saints tonight, taking the pressure off Steve Walsh, all running plays down the field. <laughs> you, Reuben, and Gil Finner. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, those guys doesn't get um, as much uh, publicity as, you know, they need it. Um, you know, we got guys that don't even play, but, you know, they're just to push us the extra yard. Buford, uh, Bobby Morris, Dalton, you know, who hasn't been back in the lineup yet. Um, you know, but Ruben and Gil has did a tremendous job each uh, this year. And, uh, you know, and it's funny how, you know, you get a running back who goes in there um, every other play and, you know, sort of cold. And uh, the things that they do uh, coming in cold, and, you know, just getting that yard and uh, that we need, uh, you know, I think they did a hell of a job this year. What went through your mind when the Rams marched right down the field and tied it up? <laughs> uh, I was thinking overtime, but then again, you know, I looked at it, looked at the clock, and it had like a minute and 20 seconds, a minute and 19 seconds, and I said, well, if we get at the 35 or the 30, uh, you know, we can count on Morty, and then they threw it past the E, and I was like, oh, this is over, you know? So, uh, um, you know, we, everybody was saying prayers on the side, and uh, finally, you know, the Lord responded by letting us uh, make that field goal and going to the playoffs. Sweet revenge for a team that has knocked the Saints out mm -hmm. in 83, and then for the most part, it, it didn't mathematically last year, but uh, Mike Lansford's field goal really hurt this team last year. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they're a good team. Uh, they they played us tough. They, uh, they, they tried to do what uh, Atlanta did to Dallas, and uh, unfortunately, they came up on the short end of the stick, you uh, know? Um, they played us great, knowing that they had nowhere to go um, but just home to watch us in the playoffs uh, now. But they, they, the guys played tough, and you know, especially the second half, they came out and they tried to stop us. They, well, they did shut down the running game a little bit, but uh, you know, we did other things that were effective, and so uh, we won the game. You don't want to sound like a broken record. I know no. we've talked about the special teams, but once oh, yeah. again, the defense carried the offense oh, yeah. when it had to when the offense struggled in the first part of the second half. Oh, yeah, I compliment a lot of guys in there on their defensive performance, and uh, they played just great. Um, I think the, the situations they, uh, the, the, I guess, the things, the big plays they came up with today, causing fumbles, uh, you know, putting pressure on the quarterback, um, causing incomplete passes, making the quarterback hairy. Um, you know, I tip my hat off to those guys, and, I, you know, I compliment them on their you know, job well done, and I, I thank them. Um, <laughs> a lot today and say, hey, thanks for the playoff, you know, and uh, they did a hell of a job. All right, Craig, thanks a lot. Heading to Chicago now. That's kind of your weather, cold weather. Oh, yeah, I like it. You know that. All right, Craig, thanks uh, a lot. 
Craig Hayward for the Saints, part of that big second touchdown drive. He had several key drives, or several key runs, I should say, and, of course, the touchdown from two yards out. The Saints win it by a field goal. They'll be heading to Chicago for Sunday's playoff showdown. Jim? Thanks very much, Mike. That's about all that can be said, I guess. This has been a real treat tonight for me, and I hope for everybody at home to see these players on the field. And the fans may not realize teams, and I really didn't until tonight, teams just do not allow this sort of thing normally. No, I think uh, it's a special occasion. Besides being New Year's Eve, the Saints are in the playoffs <laughs> for only the second time in their history. You'll be able to see it right here on Channel 4, 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon from Soldier Field, the Bears and the Saints. Speaking of doing some house cleaning, we had planned to bring you 12 for the road tonight. Obviously, we have run over covering the Saints story. We'll have that for you tomorrow night. In the meantime, Saints 20, Rams 17, numbers tell the story. That's the news for 1990. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year. The preceding program was pre-recorded.